Chris looked up from his work and looked at the flashing light in his workshop, a signal that someone was heading down his half-mile gravel driveway. He looked down and finished the welding he was doing, raising the visor of his helmet and looking at the progress of his latest creation. Chris had time and was in no hurry to greet his guest. He checked the video feed to see who it was. Light Lexus Sedan. How did he manage to get through the gate? He'll look at the footage later and figure it out. Of course, an electric gate is like any other lock. They serve only to keep an honest person honest. But still. He pulled off his heavy gloves, grabbed a towel to wipe the sweat from his face, and walked over to his bench to light a cigarette. He took a drag and watched as the Lexus rounded the final bend above the south end of the pond and turned left at the fork that led to the house. He held the cigarette between his lips, turned off the equipment, and took the Beretta 92FS 9mm from the bench. Leaving the workshop, he quietly walked across the lawn to his visitor, who was busy ringing the doorbell of the house. He stood behind the Lexus and looked after her. He did not expect, did not hope to see her again. Well, now everything was in the past. She couldn't hurt him anymore. Hello, Callie. What do you need? She turned so quickly that she tripped, her heel caught in a gap between the porch boards, and she fell awkwardly on her butt. Chris chuckled to himself but didn't outwardly show that he was amused. Or bothered. He waited. Uh, hi, Chris. I... He waited patiently. I... Well, it's good to see you. I... He turned and headed back to his workshop, throwing the cigarette butt at her Lexus. Callie hurried after him, watching in horror as his lit cigarette flew past her open passenger window. When he entered his workshop, he heard her come in after him, sat down, and lit another cigarette. What do you want, Callie? Six years ago, Chris purchased this Bondanta 200-acre piece of East Texas paradise. In fact, he bought 50 acres six years ago and was fortunate to acquire larger adjoining tracts until he had amassed an impressive on one town 200 private acres. He didn't need one town 200 acres, but it ensured a comfortable distance from his immediate neighbors. He had no interest in working the land and so hired a manager to handle the day-to-day -day operations of most of the property. Juan farmed approximately 1,100 acres of land, raised approximately 400 head of cattle and all related activities. In exchange, Chris split all of the ranch's income and expenses with Juan 3070, Juan kept 70%, and allowed him to build a home for his family on the opposite end of the property. For the first year, they lived in a one-story house that Chris bought for them. It was a match made in heaven. Juan had a stable, honest job, made good money to raise his family, and Chris had his own space and a built-in family of friends when he felt the need for company. Juan and his family respected Chris's desire for privacy, although they did not understand it, and they developed a comfortable connection and mutual dependence. Juan fiercely protected Chris's personal space to the point that Chris would go weeks without seeing or hearing from anyone other than Juan and his family. Chris always welcomed visits from Juan's boy, Carlos, a fidgety five-year-old with pure energy, and his mother, Maria. They often came to him with food and stayed while he ate. Maria, as Juan liked to say, was warm in winter and shady in summer. A large but beautiful and kind-hearted woman, Maria loved her family selflessly. Juan and Chris met weekly to discuss property matters, play pool and drink, beer for Juan and scotch for Chris. Chris has never had better friends. They met when Chris was looking for day laborers to help him mow and burn a 20-acre property north of his pond. He wanted to expand his pond from 6 acres to 26 acres. He drove to a rundown hotel on Main Street where men gathered to await any work for the day. On his first day, Chris hired six guys who worked harder than anyone he had ever seen, and not one of them beat young Juan. The expansion of the pond took three months, and the only permanent worker was Juan. Over these few months, a friendship gradually developed between them. 
When Chris found out that Juan and Maria were living in that terrible hotel, he suggested they hire Juan as their property manager, and as they say, the rest is history. Callie looked at Chris, sitting with a cigarette between the fingers of his left hand. He was in great shape and looked better than ever with his long, curly hair and well-trimmed beard. She hadn't seen him for so long, seven years, eight months, and three days. She was mad as hell at him. She loved and missed him terribly. Of course, it took her two years to realize that she still loved him and missed him in her life, as good riddance was her first, but not her last. Thought about the husband she broke up with. She absentmindedly tapped her toe on the floor. God, did she really think him leaving was a good thing? After the first two years, when she finally realized that she still loved him and her cold heart began to warm and ache, she thought about trying to find him, but could not bring herself to spend the money and effort. After all, wouldn't she? Didn't he just disappear without saying a word to her? She played the pathetic victim for years. Poor thing. Her husband just disappeared one day. And, in the end, it seemed to her that she had the right to know where he had disappeared to. It's a new habit, Chris, she said, pointing to the cigarette. Chris looked at her coldly and said nothing. I... I had a lot of time to prepare for this meeting, but now I'm at a loss. Chris exhaled smoke through his nostrils, flicked some ash onto the floor and crossed his arms. You look great, Chris, but you don't. Apparently, I should repeat my question. What do you want, Callie? Chris didn't like it, but her presence caused his thoughts to split for a moment. One, the larger part, was curious and wondering why she was in his workshop, and the other, worried about everything else. They married young. Chris was 21 and Callie was 23, but waited six years before having children. They originally wanted two, but God had other plans, and they accepted that Katie would be their only child. They overcame the difficulties associated with career development and focused on caring for and raising their daughter. It wasn't a bad marriage. It was a typical marriage. The demands of career and family left little time to develop their relationship, but they tried their best. And while Chris knew things could be better, he was not at all prepared to find out just how bad things actually got. Then Callie decided it was time to talk, seven years, eight months, and three days ago. And since then, she hasn't seen or heard anything from him. Chris didn't show up for work that day. He didn't quit. He just didn't show up. He took $300,000 from their joint estate and disappeared. His BMW was found a month later in three counties south of their home, parked in a parking lot. He wasn't hiding or running, not really. He'd simply had enough, and when the last straw came, he simply decided to split their assets 30-70 in Callie's favor and start over. Well, I thought that after all this time, you should explain everything to me. She attacked him. She couldn't believe his attitude. This defiance, as tough as a nickel-plated steak, left her bewildered. Was he supposed to? What was she thinking? What did she expect from him? Surprise, yes, remorse. I hope, but anger and contempt, no. Such a thing never occurred to her. I don't owe you a damn thing, Callie. We discussed everything years ago, and I wasn't interested, remember? I know it wasn't all smooth sailing, but it wasn't that bad, Chris and that's certainly no excuse for abandoning your family. He raised an eyebrow at her and put out his cigarette in the ashtray. Listen, I have neither the time nor the desire to talk to you. Why don't you write me a letter telling me how I let you down and mail it to me? Maybe someday I'll even open it and read it. As Callie looked at Chris, the light in the workshop flickered, distracting her for a moment. Chris looked at the video camera and noticed Juan's F-250 pulling up to the store. For the record, I didn't leave my family. I left my bad wife. Katie and I still have a great relationship. In fact, she was here not more than a month ago, for a week. The moment Juan stopped, Chris walked up to Callie and gently grabbed her left elbow. He turned her around and began to escort her to the car, despite her stunned protests. Hello, Chris. I saw that the gate was open and decided to pop in and check on you. Everything is fine? Hello, Juan. Yes, everything is fine. 
My ex-wife just stopped by to buy me a new gate and say hi. Wife, Callie cried. We are not divorced. This surprised Chris. He definitely thought that she had already filed for divorce. True, he never saw or signed any papers, but he believed that she could divorce him without it. How was he supposed to know that he had never been divorced? She said she didn't want to get a divorce, so maybe that's true. Listen, Chris, we started off on the wrong foot. Can't you just give me some of your time? I want to talk. I need to talk to you. Chris pondered his goal. Maybe at best the motor is broken and he can easily replace it, but at worst, broken motor, sheared or bent bolt and sprocket, no problem. Just time and money. And Chris had plenty of that. He noticed Callie saying something. He looked at her for a moment. Why was she still here? And why was she saying something? It doesn't matter. Everything is in order. Have you examined the gate, Juan? Doesn't it look like something is broken? I looked, Chris. The motor is spinning. I think we have a bent bolt, that's all. I can fix it this afternoon. Chris nodded and looked back at Callie, who was apoplectic. Their last conversation, seven years earlier, had gone no better. No. What do you mean, no? You haven't even listened to me to the end yet. I mean, no, plain and simple. This will never happen. While we are still married. Could you at least listen to what I have to say, Chris? Okay, Callie. On one condition. And which one? After you speak, the discussion will end. I don't think we can solve this in one conversation, Chris. Why are you being so unreasonable? I'm not being unreasonable, Callie. My position has always been the same, and it will not change now. How can we fix this if you refuse to even consider new possibilities, Chris? It's all something new to try. What exactly do you think is broken, Callie? We are broken. Well, at least our sex life. Come on, Chris. You can't be happy. We have been married for 24 years, together for 27. We need to diversify our relationship if we expect to live another 25 years. Well, I defer some of that to you, Callie. I would love to spice things up. But you know, there's a difference between using just any old spices and making sure everything is properly seasoned. And for the record, yes, I was satisfied. I take it you can't say the same thing. Have you never even thought about this? Of course, I thought. Who didn't think so? It's a wonderful fantasy, but that's all it's cracked up to be. That's an archaic way of looking at it, Chris. It's almost a trend now. Many, many couples go in this direction. It's an open, honest, and modern approach to marriage, and I think it's a great way to preserve our relationship in the future. So what exactly are you suggesting, Callie, an open marriage where we have fun with other people separately or maybe together? Or do you want to make me one of those sick, submissive, cuckold husbands? Or maybe you just have too much love and want a poly relationship? You bring a second husband so I can listen to you two have sex while I do the dishes? Is this what you want, Callie? I'm not sure what I want. I'm not trying to be a bitch. I love you and I want things to get better, not worse. How can your relationships with other men improve the situation? It's not fair, Chris. I'm just saying that expanding our horizons will benefit us. That's not what you're saying, Callie. You stated that you don't like the idea of me having sex with other women, but since you definitely want to have sex with other men, you're willing to be fair about it. How then can our marriage improve if we both do things that the other doesn't like? We have to grow and change, Chris. And I, for my part, am ready for this. I understand that I also need to grow up, and I will do it. I want you to work with me to make our sex life more fulfilling for both of us. Is your male ego so fragile that you can't even think about it? That you're willing to risk the health of our marriage? I'm ready to explore the possibility of adding spice, but I have a line that I don't want and can't cross? Is our sex life so unsatisfying that you're willing to risk our marriage by doing this, Callie? Damn it, Chris, you're not fair. How am I unfair? I have made my position clear. I will not have sex with other women while we are married, and I will not stay married to you if you have sex with other men. This is as simple and honest as I can make it. And that's all? You decide how our marriage will develop, and I have no say. I thought you were a stronger person, Chris. No, we decided together what our marriage would be like 24 years ago, and now you want to renegotiate the terms. 
Let me ask you, Callie, what exactly is it about me that no longer attracts you? Why do you want sex with someone else so badly that you'll risk our marriage by broaching the subject? I didn't do anything to jeopardize our marriage, and I still find you very attractive, Chris. I just think a little variety will help us appreciate what we have in each other. Oh, but you did it, Callie. Just by suggesting something like that, you put our marriage in jeopardy. I'm much less attracted to you now than I was 20 minutes ago, and I'm not at all sure that our marriage has a future. These are terrible words, Chris. You are twisting my words and making it bigger than it should be. Okay, Callie, can I ask you a few questions? Just yes or no answers, no embellishments, no arguments. Chris, I love you and I want to be married to you, but any marriage, even the best one, must be fresh. We must make an effort. Callie, are you unhappy? No, but I want more from our relationship. How the hell can you get more out of our relationship by having another relationship? Oh, damn. Never mind. Damn it, Callie. What? Just because I'm honest and want to try something different makes you lose your temper? Grow up, Chris. God, what a little boy you can be. You are not satisfied with sex with me, and you want sex with other men. I hear you, Callie, loud and clear. Chris, you're not listening. Every marriage becomes callous. Just because I think a little variety is needed doesn't mean I'm not satisfied with you when we make love. I'll just appreciate it more if I have something to compare it to. I already said no, Callie. What will you do now? Chris, we need this. No, Callie, we don't need it. Maybe you need it, but we definitely don't. I'll ask again, what will you do now? I don't know, Chris. I love you. But this... We have to change. Or... Please don't push me, Chris. I thought you'd at least be willing to discuss this. Callie, we discussed this. My answer is no, and there will always be a no. The question now is, can you get through this, and can we save our marriage? Is there really no other way for you to feel complete so that we have a future? I'm not even sure I need it. I mean, I'll never feel like you're satisfied, and who wants to live life knowing that won't come back? Chris, you always satisfied me, but not so much that you don't want to have sex with someone else. I understand, Callie. I really do. You don't always fully satisfy me sexually either, and I often look at other women and wonder what it would be like to sleep with them. The difference is that I know we can't always be at our best, and so when you're not doing well in the bedroom, I don't hold it against you or decide that the only way to fix the situation is to get to know someone else. And that's what you're asking of me, Callie. You're asking for my permission to destroy our marriage. They looked at each other for several minutes, each lost in their own thoughts, until Chris suddenly sat up straight. Have you already had sex with him? What? With whom? What are you talking about, Chris? Callie, I know you. You already have someone in mind. So have you already had sex with him? Don't be stupid, Chris. I just thought you might be interested in trying to make our marriage better. I'm sorry that I thought you were better than you really are. You don't need to insult me any more than you already have. I know you have someone you want to have sex with, otherwise you wouldn't be pushing me so hard and so fast. Remember, I've been arguing with you for 27 years. Why don't you try the honest approach for a change? You know, try to be a better person. Well, me not. Crap. I'm sorry, Chris. He and I discussed this, but I told him that I would not cheat on you, that I would talk to you about it and try to get you to agree. So, you were talking to another guy about how you weren't into me anymore? and that you wanted sex with him instead of me, and then, because you're so damn honest, you decided to ambush me with some bullshit about expanding our horizons and openness to save our stale marriage. Well, I can do without that kind of honesty. Chris, I'm sorry I did that. I feel terrible, but I stand by my words. This could be good for us. Just give us a chance. No, Callie. You might as well have cheated on me already. You did the same damage. I can never feel like I trust you or fully satisfy you, and honestly, I don't want you to be unsatisfied. I mean, how long before you decide that something I don't know won't hurt me? After all, you've convinced yourself that this will only be good for our marriage, so even if I say no and you decide to stay, eventually you'll end up having sex with him or someone else you like. I'll like it. Chris stood up from the table and looked at his wife. 
can you at least wait until we break up before you have sex with him? I don't expect you to wait until the divorce is final, but at least until one of us moves out and we agree on the terms of the divorce. Chris, I don't want a divorce. I really want us to be better. I'm sorry, Callie, but I'm not in the mood to share, and why would you stay in a stale marriage with someone you find only unattractive? And then he left. Seven years, eight months, three days ago. Chris, can you just forget about your damn gate and talk to me? Chris looked at her in confusion. He gave her what she wanted all those years ago. She didn't want a divorce, and he didn't file for one. She wanted sex with other guys, and he let her have it. Damn, so annoying. Callie, we've already said everything we need to say. I moved on. You wanted sex with other men, and I assume that's what it is. You said you would tolerate me having sex with other women, and I did. You didn't want a divorce, and I didn't file. What do you want now? You. I want you back. I was with you, and you left me. Oh, sorry, Callie, it's Juan. Juan, that crying bitch is my wife, Callie. Which is just leaving. Callie, go home. Go home and leave me alone. I do not want to see you. I do not love you. Hell, I don't even know you and I don't like you. For that matter, I hope you find love again, and I pray that you receive as much good as you give. Chris was not surprised by the sudden appearance of Juan and Maria, but was surprised by the absence of their son. Hello, Chris. The gate was repaired and Maria made us some gorditas. We thought you might want to eat and talk. Thank you, Maria. Where is my beloved five-year-old? He's gone, Chris. Carlos is staying with a friend tonight. He's so excited. They have a horse. Well, maybe we should buy him his own horse. What do you think, Juan? I think you like causing me problems, Chris. Chris laughed loudly as the three walked back into the kitchen. For some reason, when Maria was there, they always went to the kitchen. Maria got busy preparing the food while Chris handed the beer to Juan and left the room to pour himself a whiskey. He knew what awaited him and decided that drinking would do him good. What did you have to do to fix the gate, Juan? Juan laughed. Straighten the bolt! You're in luck, Chris. Yeah, lucky, Chris muttered. Maria looked at Chris, then at Juan. Juan told me that you had a visitor today. Is it true that the infamous Callie came by? Unfortunately, it's true. I can't say why she came in, but she did, and your poor husband had to clean up after her. Maria giggled and then, seeing the look on his face, skillfully changed the subject as they ate. When they finished eating, she ushered the men out of the kitchen while she began cleaning up. Why don't you two come into the living room while I clean up? Juan, please pour me a glass of wine. I'll be there soon. She's going to interrogate me, isn't she? Yes, boss. Stop this crap, Juan. Your English is better than mine. Yes, boss. Chris poured himself more whiskey and Juan poured Maria a glass of white Zinfandel wine. You'll have to talk, jefe. Maybe you're already running, see? I could have done that before I ate her gorditas, Juan. They both laughed. Chris never tired of Juan's sense of humor. It always suited his mood perfectly. Juan was a perceptive and intelligent friend, and despite the significant age difference, they had much in common. Chris considered them both more than friends and allowed them liberties that he would not tolerate in anyone else. They never took advantage of this, but sometimes they tested the boundaries of these freedoms. Ultimately, Chris always benefited from this and was fully confident that if Maria was going to push him now, it would serve him well if he allowed her to do so. He understood this intellectually, but emotionally, well, that was a completely different matter. Chris, we're going to talk, so this is your last drink for a while. Maria walked into the family room just as Juan was handing her a glass of wine in a move that seemed choreographed, but Chris knew it was nothing more than a couple deeply in love and in sync with each other. See, Jeffa, Chris muttered as they all smiled, each for their own reason. Chris, we talked very little about your marriage and how it ended. We didn't ask you too many questions because it seemed like you weren't very comfortable talking about it and it seemed like it was none of our business. But I can see that you're upset. And Juan told me about what happened with Callie today and we want to help you. Maria, Juan, I love you both and appreciate your concern, but I'm fine. I'll be fine, really. 
Juan spank him for me. Which Juan did, since Maria ordered. Chris, it's already overdue. It came today, it could come tomorrow, or next month, or next year. You looked like a ghost today when Callie was here. Let us help. Maybe if you talk about it, you'll feel better. Exactly, Maria exclaimed. Chris, have you ever told anyone about this? Chris sighed, resigned to the inevitable painful kindness of his friends. No, even Callie. Okay, my friend, let's talk. Juan laughed in a fake Spanish accent, twirling the mustache he didn't have. Chris, my favorite uncle, right now. Uncle Chris, okay, Maria. Chris drained his glass and began to tell his story to his family. What have you done? Katie shouted over the phone. I'm sorry, Katie, I had to. No, I didn't have to, Mom. Why you two never got divorced, I will never know. But I do know that he was not happy to see you. Well, maybe. But he seemed more upset about the broken gate than about meeting me. Doesn't this mean that it's time for us to, well, I don't know, clarify the situation? This means that you not only broke his heart, but also broke his gate. Did you break his heart? All I was trying to do was fix a stale marriage. What to do if his stupid male ego got in the way? He doesn't take it that way, Mom. And what does it matter? This was many years ago. He has moved on. He is happy. Why should you go and upset him again? We never talked about this, Katie. He just left. He took what he could quickly, cash, and left. Well, then you didn't care, Mom. Why do you suddenly care now? Callie paused. That was the question, wasn't it? Why now? Why, after all these years, did she feel the need to see and talk to her husband? Perhaps closure? What a cliché. She didn't believe it for a second. What then? She asked herself this question countless times and always came back to the same thing. I still love him, Katie. I don't understand this part, Chris. She came to you and said she wanted to talk about an open marriage, so it was just talk, right? Maria looked straight at Juan. Talking is normal. It's harmless. Juan talks all the time. Sometimes I listen. Well, maybe if that was all there was, Maria. Maybe if I was the first and only person she talked to about it, but I'm not, right? I'll pour myself another drink now, Maria, okay? She nodded, considering the situation. Maria, let's say Juan came to you to discuss this issue. He would like to have an open marriage, maybe try something else. How would you react? I would slap him hard, say no, and make him sleep in a barn for a week. Then I would make him beg me for forgiveness, but I wouldn't leave him, Chris. Maybe not, Maria. What if he only talked to you about it after he found a woman he wanted to sleep with and talked to her about it? What are you feeling now? Maria thought for a moment before her eyes began to glow. She seemed to change before their eyes. From a loving, concerned friend and wife, she turned into a fire-breathing killer. My God, I think I understand now. Yes, Maria. Callie didn't just open up an honest dialogue with me about the state of our marriage. No, she spent weeks, maybe months, deceiving you, cheating on you. What? Juan asked not quite understanding what was being said. Juan, she had to seduce or be seduced by this man. It would take weeks or months for her to feel comfortable enough with this man to discuss her boring sex life and how to approach her husband about an open marriage because she didn't want to cheat. Seduction takes time. And she hid it all from Chris, lied to Chris, and complained to the man about Chris and their sex life together. It's unforgivable. And then she only talks to Chris after she's agreed to have sex with the man, if her husband agrees. Yes, Chris. Yes, Maria. In my eyes, she has already abandoned me. She spent a lot of time getting to know this man and had fun getting attached to him behind my back. It's normal to be attracted to other people. It's natural. So it was with me. But I had never had a secret, intimate dinner with another woman I found attractive. I have never developed an intimate relationship or lied to my wife about it. I would never complain about my sex life to anyone other than my wife. And I would certainly never discuss solving a marital problem with anyone other than my wife, especially someone I wanted to sleep with and who expressed interest in sleeping with me. All this would take months. Months during which she lied to me, became intimate with another man, 
confided in him, and conspired with him to get me to agree to her affair. Chris sighed. It was too much. And you found out all this while talking with her? Juan asked, impressed. No, Chris grinned. Well, almost everything. When I left that day, I knew she had ambushed me, had cheated on me, at least emotionally, and I was heartbroken and furious at the same time. But when I left home that day, I wasn't gone forever. Yet. Having rented a hotel room, I sat and thought about everything. It wasn't until several hours later that I fully realized what was happening, how long it must have gone on, and the depth of her betrayal. That's when I decided I'd had enough. She wasn't honest about her desire to spice up our marriage. If that's what she wanted, we could discuss it and try a lot of things without involving others. She never told you she was bored, Chris? No, Maria. I guess I should have known. But we both spent years building our careers and raising Katie. Our sex life was never a priority. She had to be, I know. But that was not the case. But if she hasn't had sex with him yet, why didn't you try to talk to her? Win her back. Maria, you are sweet, and I love you. Do you think... Could you love and respect Juan the way you do now and do what Callie did to me? I could never... Oh, yes, I understand. No, I couldn't. It would already be too late. But Chris, she said today that she still loves you. Why not talk to her now? Katie laughed. Mom, you can't love someone and treat them the way you treated Dad. I was honest with your father. After all these years, you're still lying to yourself, Mom. What you did was only honest to the extent that you would have talked to Dad before you had sex with Dan, not after you cheated on Dad. I didn't cheat on your dad with Dan. What will you call it then, Mom? What did you do? If it were the other way around, would you call your dad honest? It was wrong, yes, but it wasn't bad enough to ruin our marriage. But, Mom, it's not over. You are still married. Katie laughed. Katie, God, you're as bad as your father. I should have known he would make me look bad. Mom, Dad never talked to me about what happened. I know what I know based on what you told me. I think bad of you. Because of what you did, not because of what he said you did. You told me you met this guy, Dan, at work. That he flirted with you for weeks before you started flirting back. That you had lunch and dinner together, went to a couple of concerts together. That you were infatuated with him and that he seduced you. Is this all there is to it? Well, yes, but... Mom... Does any of this look like you were faithful to Dad? Did you tell Dan to fuck off like a good wife should? Did you tell your dad that some idiot at work was flirting with you and trying to seduce you? Have you told Dad about all the dinners you shared with Dan? About dinners? Did you have dinner with Dan or go to concerts with him with Dad's permission? Or did you lie to him about where you were and who you were with? Katie, I made a lot of mistakes, but... Let's talk about something else for a minute, Mom. Let's forget about how badly you treated your dad how you cheated on him. Why now? When he left, you were happy to be rid of him. Of course, you were angry that he left, that he didn't give you the opportunity to argue anymore about the fact that you were being promiscuous. Catherine, it doesn't matter, Mom. You were happy when he left. When his car was found and you found out that he took the money and disappeared, you couldn't wait to end up in Dan's bed. This is all you were thinking about. Admit it. I was angry, Katie, but I wasn't slutty. Your father behaved like a child and abandoned me. Why should I stop living because he couldn't act like an adult? Tell yourself what you want, Mom, but the truth is that you didn't care that he left. You did what you wanted. You got what you wanted. Dan got what he wanted. The only one who didn't get it was Dad. I don't understand why I called you, Katie. Me too, Mom. Leave Dad alone. If you want to sort it out, file for divorce, but leave him alone. Why should I talk to her, Maria? We have nothing more to discuss. She may love me, but I don't love her the way I used to, and I don't want to be loved by her. I don't trust her, and she and I clearly want different things from our marriage. But Chris, you're still married. Why didn't you divorce her? Wouldn't that be better? Maybe, Juan. I don't know. I don't hate her. I mean, I told myself I hated her. But to be honest... I don't think about her at all anymore. 
I probably could have divorced her and taken whatever I could get my hands on, but I didn't want that. I just wanted to leave. Money didn't seem important. Career didn't seem important. I just wanted to leave, forget, and move forward on my own terms. Who needs a divorce if you don't plan to get married again? Besides, I always thought that she would file for divorce. So what now? What will you do now? She's here, back in your life. Now what? Will you run away again? Will you run away from us? Maria fought back tears. Maria, I have never run away from people I love. Only from those who hurt me. I'm not running away. Then talk to her, Hefe. Tell her goodbye before she destroys your gate again. Katie, please. I really love your father. Yes, I made mistakes. Yes, it took me a long time to admit that I missed him, that I still loved him, and it took even longer to muster up the courage to admit that I wanted him back. Why now? Because now I'm trying to be honest. I love it. I will always love it, and I want to try again. I hate my life without him. It took me a long time to understand this, but now I understand. Maybe it's too late, but if I don't try... Please, Katie, will you help me? Help you hurt him again? No, Mom, I won't do that. Katie, he never filed for divorce. Maybe he still loves me. Maybe we can make things right. I have to at least try. I must. I'll talk to him, Mom, but I don't promise anything. I won't bully him for your sake. And God help you if you hurt him again. Thank you, Katie. I love you. No, of course. I don't blame you, Katie. I wasn't hiding. She could find me at any moment. I just never thought that she would want to, especially now, after so many years. Well, I just didn't want you to think I was taking her side. This is not true, and it is especially important for you to know this before I say what I have to say. It sounds ominous. What's the matter, honey? There was a pause. This might not be something that would bother most people, but Katie wasn't one to hesitate or stall. She called a spade a spade and never shied away from it. Chris was very proud of this. Katie had a strong mind and a strong sense of self-worth. She was confident, smart, and independent, just as he had hoped her father would be. She asked me to help her, Dad. Help her with what, Katie? She really wants to talk to you. Really talk, I mean. Chris sighed. What does she think needs to be said now? Seriously, I'm not trying to be an ass. It just seems so pointless. What the hell does she want? She says that she loves you, that she misses you and wants to try to fix everything or at least defuse the situation. Well, it seems consistent anyway. It all depends on what she wants anyway. I don't want to see her or talk to her, Katie. I know, Dad. Maybe if you give her this, you can finally put an end to this. Much was left unanswered. You never talked about it. You never divorced her. Damn, you didn't even tell her to fuck off. Chris thought for a moment. As the seconds ticked by, Katie began to worry that she had jeopardized her relationship with her father. Dad? I don't know, Katie. I don't see anything good in this. I'm happy. Well, I was happy until recently. What will I get from this? I don't know, Dad. Maybe nothing. Maybe mental pain. Maybe happiness. I told her that only God can save her if she hurts you again. I love you, Dad. I think this is a chance for you to close this book and put it away. I know you say you were happy, but on some level, it had to bother you. You know, there was no honest conversation, divorce, anything. I don't expect or want you to get back together with her. And to be honest, I only agreed to talk to you about it because I think that you need it. I love her, but I don't really care what she wants. Chris couldn't help but chuckle. Maybe you're right, and she really can't hurt me anymore, Katie. I would have to love her for her to do this, but I don't. Another painfully long pause. Okay, Katie, tell your mom I'll be at the lunchbox tomorrow at two o'clock. I'll give her 20 minutes and then expect her to leave me alone. This is important, Katie. I will only meet her once. She must promise that after tomorrow she will leave me alone. Thank you, Dad. I'll make sure she promises it before I tell her where and when. Good luck. I love you. I love you too, Katie. Hello, Chris. Kelly, can I sit down? 
Oh, damn it, woman, you wanted to talk. I agreed, and here we are. Come on, time is ticking. Callie held her breath. She had high hopes for this meeting. When Katie told her that Chris had agreed to meet her, she was very excited. Finally, they will talk. However, it now turns out that her optimism was premature. Sorry, Chris, I'm a bit nervous. Have you placed your order? Callie, we're not on a date here. I have coffee if you want, get in line. They don't have table service, but I'll be leaving in 19 minutes. Choose. Indeed, Chris, this conversation is long overdue. Are you really seriously going to limit our conversation to 20 minutes? No, there are now less than 19 minutes left, Callie. Do you really want to spend it arguing with me about this? Callie tried to calm herself down. Everything was not going as she had imagined, as she had hoped. She absently brushed away a tear and reached across the table to take his hand. Chris, I... I made some mistakes. We made some mistakes. I want... We had a good time together, Chris. We had a good life. Of course you miss it. You miss Dallas. You miss your marriage. You miss me she almost begged. Chris looked at her hand covering his and carefully, slowly pulled it away and took his coffee. As he took a sip, he found it surprising that he felt nothing at all when she touched him. He didn't want it, but he didn't feel disgusted either. He smiled. He felt better. Maybe Kathy, Juan, and Maria were right. Maybe this will do him good. He often told himself how much he hated Callie after she cheated on him. And then he told himself that he just didn't care, but he didn't believe it until now. When she touched his hand, he felt neither longing, nor disgust, nor kinship, nor hatred. He felt a sweaty hand, nothing more, nothing less. Callie, seeing his smile, smiled back at him. I have a good life now, Callie. I'm a fit and attractive, fairly successful man with a full head of hair and teeth of my own, living in East Texas. He grinned. I have good, loyal friends, a wonderful relationship with my daughter, and no regrets. I don't miss Dallas. I miss the marriage I thought we had, the wife I thought I had. But then I realized that was a lie. I realized that I am also not the husband you thought about. So, no, I have no desire to waste time crying about what could have been. It wasn't a lie, Chris. We loved each other. We had a strong marriage which makes what you did even more tragic. The smile on Chris's face instantly disappeared. And what did I do, Callie? You just left, Chris. We should have talked more. We could work something out if you stayed and just listened to reason. After all this time, do you still think it's my fault? Chris stood up to leave. I think we said everything we needed to say, Callie. Chris, no, please just listen to me. I love you and want... Chris waved his hand dismissively. Callie, you don't love me, at least not in the way you think. You don't know me now. I'm a different person. You are convinced of this. No, your life may not be going as well as you hoped, but I am not the solution. We are not the solution. Besides, I don't love you anymore. I love the girl I married. I will always love that memory. But we grew apart and became different people with different goals and dreams. Sometimes marriages thrive on this, and sometimes they just survive. Ours is not. What did I do so bad, Chris? Please. Callie, if you still haven't realized, then it's really over between us. You abused me, my trust, and left me powerless in managing my own marriage without my knowledge or consent. You took my half of that power and gave it to Dan, along with the promise of your pussy. I was far from a perfect husband, and I'm sure I could have handled your betrayal better than I did, but I did what I thought was best for me. I didn't punish you. I took what I could get quickly and left you alone with your dreams. Callie was crying quietly now. Move on. Forever, Callie. If you don't apply, I will. Maybe I should have done this eight years ago. I don't know. I didn't. You didn't. And maybe it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, but I'm better off without you, and it will always be that way. Chris leaned over and kissed her tenderly on the cheek. I'm sorry we let the situation get as bad as it did, Callie. I loved you once, and I'm sorry that I let you down, that we let each other down, but you never gave me, or us, a chance to make things right, 
and that's something I don't want and can't forget. He looked at her kindly one last time and left. He left feeling lighter than when he entered. He didn't rejoice in Callie's pain. He just felt relieved not to have his own. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one.